Hi, good morning both. Love you. Love you to your great double act. That's very, very kind of you, man. Glad you enjoy the show. Now, what do you think? Um, good move for United. Are you happy with Ten Hag? Great result of the weekend. Are we all been a bit presumptuous here with Gareth? Listen, we all love stuff in uh, Liverpool. However, uh, Gareth is not an upgrade. Um, whoever his friend is, uh, my gran could put Man U in a better position. They're not lighting up the league. Yeah, they're going to have a great few results. Um, Ted Hogg isn't the future, but Gareth Southgate is a lot lower than Ted Hogg. Philip, can I ask you what is it that you what is it that you're you're so opposed about with regards to to Gareth Southgate? Andy, you talk a lot of sense, but what history has Gareth Southgate got running a big club side? No, he, I, look. Well, that's that's a good answer because he doesn't have that. Thank you. He, he, no, he he doesn't have that. But but he has a lot of other qualities that I think have been apparent with the through his time as the England England boss. And I, I agree with you earlier when you said he doesn't get the credit he deserves for what no. he's done with England. I, I agree with that. However, he's had arguably the best crop of players we've ever had for England. Isn't that? And I think that's a little too easy to say that, Phil. Honestly, no, I do. I'll, Phil, I'll, I'll give you a reason. Can I? Yeah, of course reason? you can. Absolutely. Fantastic. The reason is, look what happened in the Euros final. He got outplayed by a club manager who understood in-game management. He didn't. Okay, Philip. There's, that that there's said, quite, I, want to, I want to ask you one final question, if I may. Thank you. Um, who would be an upgrade if you said Ten Hag's not good enough? Who is an upgrade? <laughs> It's a really difficult one, Andy. You could you could name half a dozen managers, but it's a real project. Now, my worry with Jim Ratcliffe, it's all very positive, but is also the reading between the lines, the Gareth uh, connections with the FA, the fact that Jim's looking for this powerhouse of the North in terms of a Wembley. Yeah. Does, does he think that that tie-up with Gareth gets him what he wants? And then that worries me, then it's more about a business, less of a less than about Manchester United. So mm. I don't know. I couldn't I could throw a dozen names at you. Um yeah. you're not we're not gonna get Alonso, you know, but you you need a top you do need one of the top managers because it's a top club. Mm. The Talksport Trophy returns tomorrow live on your radio and the Talksport YouTube channel Breakfast are out for revenge after the Talksport All Stars won the five aside showpiece. Are you throwing that term about showpiece game last <laughs> July? This time around, I'll be managing the team following Alan Brazil's departure. Yeah, he didn't take it well. Is that is that the end for Big Al? Do you think? Aye. In management, or no, do you think there might be one or two other opportunities? I for don't him? think there's any way back. No, really, might not be. Wait, Could wait, be the wait. last we've seen him. In. To be fair, I spoke to a few of the lads. He, morale in the dressing room was poor was it motivational skills preparation must have been good preparation was excellent yeah <laughs> preparation was excellent the likes of Gabby Bonhoeffer, Dan Bentroy Danny Dan Ambrose Jimmy Hart and Dean Saunders will be turning out and I'm delighted to say that one of the all-stars is joining us now it's former West Ham and England striker Dean Ashton Dean a very good morning how are you mate morning Dean very well gents hope you're well good morning we're in short form Dean the question the nation wants to know How's your form? Well, it's a long while since I donned the boots. Um, I think the last time I was seen was registering a a 9.8 on the Richter scale (laughs) at West Ham, (laughs) helping to to demolish Upton Park with an overhead kick at Mark Noble's testimonial. So that was my last last outing as a a so-called player. Mm. I've got to say, I'm looking at one or two of your teammates there and, and I shouldn't be picking out and been scathing in opposition before the game. However, O'Hara, right? And I'm, I'm counting O'Hara in the same group of players as Spencer Oliver and Alex Crook, right? There's, <laughs> there's nothing that's scaring me there, to be honest with you, Dean. <laughs> O'Hara's our star man. He's the one with the star quality. You know, Spencer Oliver, he's going to be like Dennis Wise in there. I mean, imagine... Miller Ernie Wise past- in there. <laughs> 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 a big, big, big bad crook at the back. I, I don't think. Big I don't think Troy Deeney's ready for that. I don't think yeah. he's ready. No, that's a tussle I'm looking forward to. Dean, we've been talking this morning about uh, the possibility. It's been reported in the, in the newspapers tomorrow. Uh, this morning, that Sir Jim Radcliffe would potentially fancy Gareth Southgate as the manager. Were Eric Ten Hag not to continue in the role, can you see that happening? And would it be a good thing? 
I think that, that Gareth certainly amassed enough experience to take on a job the size of Manchester United, no matter what some of the, the callers might might say. I think taking on the England job is is as big, is as important and, and comes with a huge amount of scrutiny. It's just, you know, it's it's very different being a club manager than I think it is being an international manager. And um, I personally still think there's time for Ten Hag. I still think I'd like to see him with a team behind him that gets the recruitment right, which I don't feel has happened for him. And he's constantly talked about a certain way that he wants to play, but he, he hasn't got the players to play that way. So I think it's more about behind the scenes at the moment for me at Manchester United than it is necessarily mm. the manager. Dean, I'm going to ask you another one, mate. We looked at the England squad, which has been named for the upcoming games. I mean, some great, a couple of great games coming up. Kobe Maynard's in, in the squad, and Andy and I were talking about it first thing this morning. A, does that surprise you? You know, you know, does he deserve his his opportunity? And how should these games be looked at um, from Gareth's point of view? Because I'm of the opinion, rightly or wrongly. I think he should be testing players and, and, and testing maybe a, a, another formation or giving players an opportunity to play that he doesn't know an awful lot about, hasn't seen them in, 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 in game time. Where do you stand on that one? Yeah, I, th- I think it's difficult for him because he doesn't get many opportunities to, to try anything, to be honest. So Because he knows he's got to win the games and, and put on a good performance. I'm really pleased Maynou's in because in the biggest games, he's the one that's actually shone, I think, for, for Manchester United yeah. and and, and were maybe lacking in that area for for England. So it's I think it's brilliant that he's been been thrown in. But I think these are the games. You're playing your best team. You're trying to get that um, a bit of momentum from from the games. I don't think this is a time to to give people a cap or to try different form. I think it's a time against two really good sides to say right, this is our team. This is how we're going to go into the Euros with our best team and options off the bench I think that's that's how I would look at it anyway yeah and Dino just finally on tomorrow's big big game um, of course you're going to be up against the likes of Wozencroft of course and I've heard he's uh, an uncompromising big centre half um, <laughs> Tom Skinner and now again I don't see Tom as a tricky little winger so you, you're going to be up against some genuine heavyweights there yeah, look, I don't, I don't envy Ali taking on this this role. This isn't a project. This is a, <laughs> this is pressure straight away. Tom Skin has been on holiday. He's still there, isn't he? I think. <laughs> yes, yes. And look, I, I won't be going anywhere near you. I'll just be peeling off onto matter face and cat, catterall. Yeah, good. Physically, shout. physically yeah. imposing the the extra yeah. weight that I've now got. <laughs> and Ali, all I want to say is, can you just picture it after the game? Can you picture going into the bar? Ollie Mersey's on the mic. We are the champions. You got Alex Crook at the bar setting the tempo. Pards <laughs> on the tables, and there's and there's all those ex-players. We've still got our Louis Vuittons and our Gucci gear that we've still got, and maybe a, a nice little watch. And we're still pretending that we're footballers. Imagine that, <laughs> Dean. I've got news for you, mate. I can guarantee you, I will not be gracious in defeat. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you can take that as red, mate. <laughs> Listen, looking, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow, pal. Nice one, yeah, Dean. Can't wait. Cheers, Take fellas. care, mate. Looking forward to tomorrow. Should be great fun. 8.45. Talk Sport Breakfast. Waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6 a.m. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.